Meet Ava, a nine-year-old female blue-throated macaw hatched with a little bit of a scissor beak. I was asked to take her from a woman who could no longer care for her. It just so happened that it fit right in alignment with an experiment that I wanted to try. In the past, I've only had three male macaws, two camelots and one blue throat. Over the last 13 years, the dynamic between my macaws has morphed. As babies, they used to all get along. I could cuddle all of them. They were all sweet and could even share an aviary together. They often played and never fought. As they matured, my blue-throated macaw Jinx and my Camelot macaw Tusa began having quite the issue between them. It was mostly stemming from my blue-throated macaw Jinx who was the instigator. He just wanted to get Tusa all the time. I tried a ton of different training tactics and kept coming up short. There's nothing that I could do to get the three of my macaws to get along. In any groups of two, I could seem to be successful, but only for a certain period of time. Hence the idea to add a fourth macaw. I'd been thinking this in my head. Maybe it's unrealistic to expect two Camelot macaws and one blue throat macaw, especially all being male, to get along. And maybe each macaw needs its own buddy. I really wanted to test this theory and I haven't been able to until Ava. What I learned consulting with professional zoo trainers is that blue throat macaws tend to stick to their own. And so I thought that I might be more successful trying to get my blue throat macaw Jinx to have a buddy of another blue throat macaw. I never necessarily planned on another female or it happening ever, but because Ava needed a home and I was asked from a personal friend of mine, I decided it was the perfect time to give this concept a try. Ava's series can be exclusively seen in detail over on Patreon. Don't miss a video. Sign up today at patreon.com slash bird tricks and support project birds like Ava, Blue the Parrotlet over on Bird Tricks Kids, and many other birds. It's through Patreon that all of my work is supported and I'm able to share so much free content here on YouTube. So consider joining over there and don't miss a single video in the series of Ava. For now, enjoy this free video on the Ava series. What's going on with him, Ava? Isn't she cute? <laughs> so cute. You think he's cute? <laughs>guys so today is the day we want to take Jinx and Ava out and have them outside of their aviary together yeah so one of the things that we need to really be paying attention to and kind of a spot where my brain has been going a lot especially this morning is setting yourself up for success you hear us talk about that all the time and so on this tree over here is a little bowl of food and make sure that food's not there because if one of the birds has access to food and the other one doesn't that could create instant problems that we would then have to try to undo. The things that we can control is having two trainers. So we're both out here. We'll both have treats. Dave and I haven't talked this through yet. I've only been, I've been really wanting to do this like the last few days. I felt super compelled and I've chickened out every time. And I'm just, I'm nervous that the very first time is going to go wrong and I don't want it to go wrong. And I can't control the bird's reactions, but what we can control, like Dave said, is the environment trying to set it up to be as successful as possible. So some of the things that I'm nervous about, one, I'm worried that Ava is going to think that we're bringing her in for a training session and she's immediately going to offer flights to me. And um, also that makes me feel like I'm, I'll be the one that's getting Ava so that she doesn't, because I've actually just done a lot of training with her recently, but I don't typically train her as much as you are and I'm not doing flights with her currently. So um, that might help. And I do think that if you initiated a training session with her in front of Jinx, that he would then dial in on you mm -hmm. and want to earn treats from you as well, which could create a, 
a problematic yeah. situation as well. So I think that there's a lot of things that could happen here. One of the things where I initiate a training session with Ava is I stay in the kitchen. So I think I'm going to remove myself from the kitchen and put myself in a different scenario. I also think that I'll bring in Jinx. First. I was thinking I get Ava and then you immediately get Jinx. That's what I was thinking as well. Um, and then where do we want to put them? Because I think that we should put them in separate places so that we have a lot of time to see an escalation. Yeah, we have both these trees. I think we could just put, maybe put Jinx on that one since Ava's more likely to fly to the kitchen. Okay. And we'll put Ava here, which is already in the kitchen, so she has less reason to fly. Which I'm going to move this food bowl so we don't forget. So one of the reasons why we're talking about this out loud is that there's, there's just so much importance to not blowing it. Um, and like you really, and and we talk about these kind of things on and off camera, obviously a lot off camera where we're like, Hey, how do we make sure that this goes well? And so hopefully this kind of behind the scenes conversation is helpful for you. So do you want me to video you coming in with Ava and then I go? Sure. It's like, go, say (laughs) go. All right. I'm going to go get Jinx. What are you uh owing about? This. Can I still do it? Can I kiss? Good boy. So I I had to show up my own treats because I don't need more, but hey. We want to abort the mission. I'm a little bit freaked out. I think he looks too heightened to do this right now. What do you think? He knows, right? Well, let's just do it at the furthest, the furthest, furthest distance we can. So I want you to go to that far tree. I'm paralyzed in fear. <laughs> So let's talk about what happens when you ignore your gut instinct. (laughs) I actually do this a lot more than you guys probably see or believe. So I have numerous red flags when I go to get Jinx. What are you uh owing about? This. Can I still do it? The fact that I'm vocalizing the, "Uh uh-oh, I don't know about this. Oh boy, I'm like cringy about the entire situation. That's so many red flags. Like I'm seeing so many things telling me this is not an ideal situation. And the part of me that's fighting for it to be an ideal situation is that I've chickened out so many times in the past wanting to do this and feeling like, oh my gosh, you're not making any progress. You're not doing anything with these two macaws. You've had her for how long and you haven't attempted anything. Just these voices in my head that become very self-judgmental of like, hey, you have nothing to show for how long you've had this bird in your care. You haven't done anything. Like you're too scared to fail. Hurry up and just try something and collect that data. And then there's the other side of my brain that's like, no, don't just jump into things. Really think it through. It'll be harder to undo a, a major mistake or, you know, bad introduction than it will to just take your time and set it up correctly. And I have these two parts of my head and my heart just battling it out and this tug of war every single day that literally has had me paralyzed up until this moment. And so I think because I have the opportunity to have Dave there, I'm like wanting it to be the ideal situation, even though I know it's not. So I just had to intercept because she wanted to fly to you. Should we abort? <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to keep her attention. Same. He's just playing with this. Want me to just bring her over so we're not risking like flights? I'm gonna get really hurt if I have to get in the middle of this. Well, that's what I'm saying. What if? I mean, I could avoid letting her fly to me because she she does. Really yeah, but I need both hands. Whoop! That's as close as I can get. Holy crap! Okay, we need to abort right now. I'm not comfortable. So Dave immediately takes Ava out and back to her aviary into our garage, which has been converted for the birds. My heart is racing, Jinxie. Well, that's kind of exactly what I was worried about. 
Um, do you think that his aggression was based off seeing her want to come to me? Or is that my, because that was my whole thing. She's going to want to come to me, which is going to create a problem. I had her pretty think? distracted with like treats because she did want to come to you. Yeah. And so I kept her on me and he was busily eating that instead of like paying attention to her trying to fly. Not that he didn't see it, but. Right. Then something changed. <clears throat> I got closer with her. And he like aggressively was going at that toy instead of more of like a keeping busy. Yeah. So it was the proximity that changed it. It wasn't her body language necessarily. I think so, yeah. So I'd be lying if I didn't admit that I was severely disappointed in how all of that went. There was so much forethought into how we set it up and it just wasn't the right day. And I think acknowledging that and, and knowing that I had this like self pressure of really wanting to produce something, you know, everybody's tuned into the Ava series and they're like, how is it going? And it's hard to be like, well, um, I haven't tried anything yet because I'm too chicken. And there's more to it, of course, than that of like, it just not feeling right up until then. But it's hard because there is all this like pressure to produce something and say something and have some sort of data. And I don't know if this was quite a failure as much as a data collection. It really depends on what your perspective of it is. But I think because I had all these other days where I was like, should I do it? It feels right. I should do it. And then I'd talk myself out of it. When I had this experience, it made me think, what if I would have tried on those other days where it felt right versus on the day that I could line Dave up and have this accessibility it that wasn't nor that wasn't necessarily the right day for jinx but that was the right day for me and dave and like us to set everything up correctly but maybe those other days could have been successful i won't know i, I will never know i can only speculate and think about it um but I think it's really important, the lesson that I want everyone to learn from this video and that I really need to learn is to trust my gut instinct. When I am literally saying out loud, oh gosh, oh no, I don't know if this is a good idea. This seems like a bad idea. <laughs> this isn't gonna go well. I don't know how many of you guys watched the pellet vi video I did. But in my head, I had this adorable picture in my mind where I was gonna pour out all these pellets, my African gray and cockatoo were gonna be there, and they were gonna be adorably like crunching on pellets. There was gonna be enough to feed the whole universe of pellets on this counter. It was just gonna be cute and adorable. And everyone was gonna be like, oh, that's adorable. Like that's what I was going for was cute. And no, when I poured those pellets, it scared Bondi just enough that made Cressy mad. Cressy went at Bondi and it was just kind of a mess. And right before that happened, I had a feeling and a glimpse at like, ooh, this doesn't really seem like a good idea. Like, should I still keep Cressy in the video? She seems a little meh, off. There was just something there that was giving me the wrong vibe. And I literally said out loud, like, should we still keep her in the video? Then talked myself out of believing my instinct or my gut feeling and was like, it'll be fine. And then it wasn't fine. Shocker. And that's exactly what I did here again. <laughs> I vocalized it so much just, and that's the beauty of being able to film myself and watching it back and editing it for all of you to be like, you idiot. Um, is just hearing myself, seeing the terrified look on my face, how much I knew like this is not a good idea, but I wanted it to be a good idea. It just wasn't. Um, and nobody got hurt. Like we collected data, that was great. We got more information, that's great. Just wasn't, wasn't the way I wanted it to go down. Some valuable feedback I got um, at the end of last year when I attended a professional animal training workshop from another amazing trainer. She's so fantastic. So shout out to you, Caitlin, if you ever see this. Um, is she told me that I spend too much time and energy beating myself up about my mistakes or, or things that I don't do quite right and um, or could have done better. I know she would just word that whole thing a lot more eloquently, but that was the gist of it. And this is one of those times where I'm like, 
I can definitely feel myself doing that and it it expends a lot of energy for myself to be like so judgy about me and I think the judgy about me comes from what how everybody else how I think everybody else is going to be judgy about me too so it's just it's like a compiling layered (laughs) judgment effect um that I really really do need to let go of and learn to get past and move on faster and I think that that's just emotional resilience of being able to be like oh okay that didn't quite go as well as I wanted it to cool I got more information I can do it better next time move on and it just takes me a little bit longer I spend a little bit more time in the discouragement phase uh before I go to like the okay cool here's how I'm gonna make it better and I do get there just takes me a little bit longer and I would love to shorten that window so for those of you guys that also struggle with this um I'm just gonna say the same thing to you and I'm just gonna remind myself to like listen to your gut instinct if it doesn't feel right like don't do it. Don't pressure yourself into it. We need to make the best decision for the animal. And the best decision for my animals in that moment would have been for me to be like, this is not the right date for Jinx. Ava's already in. Let's do a cute little training session with her. And then you put her back and we'll just try this again another day. That's what I wish I would have done. What I can look at and be really grateful about is that I can see those signs. Like I see those red flags. They're very obvious to me. And some people might be watching this and be like, what red flags? I didn't see anything wrong. I didn't see him bite that toy aggressively. I didn't see him do anything other than like cutely say his nickname. You know, I didn't see those signs. And that's really cool for me to have that ability to see those signs and recognize when it's not the right day. It's just that I need to listen to those signs too. I think listening is really important and is something that um, we don't always do well. So here's to my fail day uh, with Jinx and Ava. Better luck next time.